Lorraine, I'm gonna need you to open your legs, darling. Open your legs, darling. Something's wrong with the baby, darling. We need to, you know, get to the baby. We need to get to the baby. <laughs> welcome back to my channel where i share everything curvy fashion affordable luxury lifestyle and now a dash of motherhood darling okay and speaking of motherhood i finally feel ready i think to share my labor and birth story so this was quite a traumatic experience well for me anyway i haven't seen any other labor and birth stories here on youtube quite like mine so i really wanted to get my story out there because i know that when i was pregnant i was so so obsessed with watching everything pregnancy related especially the labor and birth stories okay because i was quite terrified of giving birth so i yeah i really wanted to put my story out there just you know whether to help or ease somebody's anxieties or maybe just let someone out there know what could potentially happen if you're pregnant now this is a quick disclaimer okay i need to say this if you are expecting if you are a pregnant mama to be and you're quite nervous like i was or quite neurotic like i was okay I highly, highly recommend that you do not watch this video because it will traumatize you. Now, speaking for somebody who watched a lot of videos and who was quite traumatized by a lot of videos, I know what I'm talking about. If you tend to get quite anxious and if you're quite a neurotic or anxious pregnant mama to be anyway, please, please, please do not watch this video because it's only gonna make you more nervous and it's just going to traumatize you even more okay <laughs> right so let's get into this labor and birth story okay so like i said i was really 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 scared about the prospect of giving birth like literally from the moment i found out that i was pregnant i was so nervous okay i need to be quick because baby girl is sleeping and i can hear her like starting to wake up a little bit so i want to be as quick as possible but be as detailed as possible so yeah i was really nervous about giving a birth so like i said i did my own research i was watching videos a lot which can be a good or bad thing depending on like how you look at it um i spoke about how i found that i was pregnant and a bit of my pregnancy journey in my life update video so if you haven't seen that make sure you guys go and watch that i'll pin that up there or up there whichever and put put it in the description box down below as well so three weeks before my due date i would say is where the labor story kind of started um because that's when i officially stopped working and i went on my maternity leave those three weeks dragged 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 i mean granted i was so tired i was huge um and my feet were swollen all the time so i needed to stop working for that reason but to be honest emotionally and mentally i kind of needed to still be in work to keep myself busy and also just entertained like being at home doing nothing and sleeping gets a bit boring okay so those last three weeks dragged now i really 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 wanted to give birth a week before my due date because that date was quite sentimental to me and um, it was related to my mom and um, because that was the day i think that my mom um, was buried so i was really 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 um hoping and trying everything for me to be able to give birth um, a week before my due date when I was 39 weeks, okay? So when I went on my mat leave when I was 37 weeks, I literally bought some um, raspberry berry tea and I was trying to drink that as much as I could. I was walking once a week. Probably this is where I went wrong. I probably should have been walking every day, but your girl's lazy okay <laughs> so i was walking once a week i was also bouncing up and down on my pregnancy ball okay which i think that really helped um just to try and like 
you know naturally induce labor but that didn't work unfortunately so my 39th week came and went um, which I was quite devastated about but once that week went I kind of was like okay do you know what I mean it's not going to happen because I convinced myself I was either going to give birth early or I was going to give birth um, quite late but I was still really really frustrated and just tired like when you come to the end of your pregnancy you were done you just literally want that baby out of you and that's literally where I was at. So in my mind, I was a week to go, but I was still thinking, oh my God, I am gonna have to be induced because you know, they say that when it's your first baby, like you hardly give birth early and like you give birth late kind of thing. So I was kind of anticipating that's gonna happen. If I keep on looking to my rights because my baby's sleeping, and she's about to wake up so okay i had to go and put her back to sleep really quickly because i wasn't concentrating anymore how cute is my mummy cup by the way <laughs> okay it's like every time i talk every time she hears my voice okay so third time lucky where was i Right, yeah, so in my 39th week, um, not a lot happened really. Oh, I did like have some spout of diarrhea. She's just on a rock, I don't know if you can hear that too. But anyway, I did have spouts of diarrhea and according to my midwife, that's like your body's way of like getting ready for labor. In my mind, I'm thinking, right, everything's like, getting ready this is how it's supposed to be like we on the way we en route to like giving birth and like meeting baby girl um but my aunt and some people who had been telling me that like you ain't giving birth anytime soon because you're lazy you're not as active as you should be and it's not gonna happen so i was like okay it's not gonna happen but a day the night before my due date um, I started feeling like period pains, like I would say, like it felt, yeah, like the start of my period. Um, so it was uncomfortable. It's discomfort, not painful, but so much so that I couldn't actually sleep. So I was like, okay, this probably means that I'm in early labor. And according to the research that I had done, you could actually be in early labor for as long as like 24 hours, like 36 hours. So I thought that I was gonna be getting those kind of like period kind of pains for, I don't know, yeah, for that long. So on the day of my due date, so on my due date, I am like calling like my family, like, oh, this is what's happened. And everyone's like, well, the people that knew because <laughs> not a lot of people knew, um, were texting me like, happy due date, happy due date. Uh, and I'm just like, yeah, thanks. But what does that mean? You know, happy due date, like only 5% of babies. Yeah, honey, you telling your birth story yeah only five percent of babies are born on the actual due date so i was like thanks but we're still here she's so anti you guys she's so anti girl girl no you better stop okay yeah so her dad was convinced that she was going to be born on her due date and I was like you don't know nothing about birth you don't know nothing about labor like it only five percent like saying all of this right so he says like I'm gonna pick up he packs his bag he comes over and I'm like okay we need to like go for a walk like try and get this baby to come so it must have been around I wanna say two or three o'clock in the afternoon. So we go for a walk around the block. Girl, the contractions start, okay? But they're literally like, not that bad, okay? But they're like once every so often, like, you know, coming and going kind of thing. Like we're just in, like catching jokes, this, that and the other, like I can still walk. And I'm also doing like curb walking again, 
this is also another way of like inducing labor where you walk with one leg up the curb and then one leg down the curb so that's what we're doing so we go for a walk we come back um so he then starts painting the doors because yeah like he had painted her room and like after that it kind of looked like the doors were a bit off so yeah so he then started painting the doors so i'm sitting at the top of the stairs while he's painting the doors like we're like talking so the contractions are still like coming like now and again and he keeps on saying like i'm telling you this baby's gonna come today this that and the other and i'm like no this is early labor like i'm trying to school him like it's not happening today um and then the contractions start being a little bit more painful okay in the sense of like okay i, I need a minute do you understand what i'm trying to say like i couldn't talk anymore during the contractions or as before i could like be like oh that kind of thing whereas like now girl the sounds pain sounds i was making were out of this world and i couldn't talk anymore and then um he was like no i need to stop i need to stop painting because i don't want the baby coming with the house set smelling of like paint fumes i'm like no you need to continue we need something to do we need distractions and she ain't coming today like i've been told you she's not coming today um so he carries on like i think he does two doors um while i'm like having contractions and stuff like that and then while he's like painting the third door i think he had started to paint the third door i think um the contractions are like getting closer they're like one every like 10 minutes he's like no this is ridiculous the baby's coming today i need to stop painting rah, rah, rah. okay so i'm like well i'm not going i'm not going to the hospital like without calling my dad no i'm not going to the hospital but my dad come in here because we have to pray before i go to the hospital because i ain't gonna die during childbirth like i was literally so morbid at this point like i was like no we need to pray we need to pray we need to pray and like i strongly believe in like putting god first like in everything that you're doing and so i was like no, i'm not going my dad's got to come like we've got to pray so i call my dad i'm like dad i think i'm about to get back to go into labor like you know where are you so my dad's at work he's like okay i'm gonna drop everything i'm gonna be there like i'll be there like as quick as as quick as i can and then i'm like no if the baby's coming then i need to make sure that the house is okay like so a week before um my due date i'd got like the house cleaned like professionally cleaned but like you know obviously like if you're living in the house and stuff like that it's going to get dirty so i started like hoovering i said get me the hoover like i need to hoover he's like no lorraine you need to come downstairs like you need to be downstairs like let's get all your bags down let's get you know everything ready like what are you wearing to the hospital this that and the other and i'm like no i need to hoover and after i hoover i then need to clean the carpet like i've got things to do so i'm literally like um hoovering <laughs> the carpet upstairs like during contractions like and i'm having to stop like it's getting really really bad so it gets to the point of where like i can't even continue hoovering and i'm like okay so i give in and i go downstairs um so while i'm downstairs i um what's it called I get, I get on my ball my pregnancy ball and i just start like bouncing like up and down and that kind of helped a little bit with the pain during the contractions but i like i was like oh my god like, if it's this painful i can manage it like if this is like child if, if this is labor and if these are the actual contractions do you know i think i'm gonna be able to manage it like i'm i'm not gonna need no pain relief because everyone was been you that i wanted epidural from jump like well done to you <laughs> if you want natural labor and if you can do it and if, listen we're all women we all have different pain thresholds and i knew that i didn't have no pain threshold i needed everything they got okay so but if i thought i thought okay if this is it i got this i can do this right so anyway 
um i call the um like the midwives like to let them know like okay i think i'm getting into labor so she's asking me about like what i'm feeling my contractions what is my body she says to me hmm, sis labor hasn't started yet this is early labor she says to me like for me to be actually going into like labor like actual labor i have to be having like three or four contractions like every 10 minutes so she says to me like so what you need to do what are you doing right now so i'm on like my pregnancy board so yeah you continue doing that like why don't you try these movements like you know um circling around like you're making it the number eight you know and then also like take a bath that will help you like calm down like help you with the pain just try to relax um and yeah you're not in labor and i'm like okay but i'm in pain and then she's like yeah that's labor and i'm like Oof, excuse you do you know what i mean because it really felt like i was getting into labor so anyway um my dad then gets here and then um i hadn't eaten all day i was starving so just to kill two birds with one stone i say to my baby like can you go and get me some food so that i can eat um after um, me and my dad finish praying and then i can do all the things that the midwife is telling me to do because we don't know how long this is going to be because i'm in early labor like she told me that i was okay um so he then leaves to get me some food me and my dad pray like i think it's about like about five ten minutes that we're praying for you know i'm feeling good i'm like pumped up and everything so as my dad is like helping because i was praying on my pregnancy bowl um so it was my dad is like trying to help me up from the from the pregnancy bowl like literally my water just breaks like a huge gush of water it just goes everywhere in my living room it's a mess and i'd always wondered what it would feel like for my water to break i thought we're just be walking down the street and it would feel like i just peed myself would i even know if my water broke what if it happened anyway it felt like um something had unplugged like there was something that was like holding my cervix up i don't know something had unplugged and a huge gush of water just came out like and it just kept on coming just kept on coming and then I was like, oh, and then my dad was like, oh my gosh, what is it? Like, are you having another contraction? And I was like, no, my water just broke. And then he was like, right. So then he calls a baby dad. He's like, you need to stop, leave everything, come back. Her waters are broken. And then he's like, crap, I can hear him on the phone. He's like, okay, I'm on my way. Um, oh, sorry, going back. So when my, um, no, not going back actually. When my waters broke, I then called back the midwife to be like, hey, hello, I've just spoken to you five minutes ago. My waters have broken. What are we about to do now? <laughs> and then she goes to me, right, if your waters have broken, you need to come to the hospital. So I go up and I have a shower because in a way, baby, like it's already about to be a nightmare in terms of like people seeing up there and everything. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Like, we need to bath and make sure that we're clean and as fresh as we can be okay before we give birth so i shower i get dressed and everything but like i said the water's still coming but it's not like still gushing out like it's like trickling down so obviously for my postpartum um preparation your girl had bought some maternity pads and then also some um adult incontinence panties like actual adult diapers basically <laughs> so i put on my adult diaper because i'm like you know i'm just by the time i get there i'm going to be drenched okay so i put that on and then you know we pack everything into the car and we head to the hospital we get there um we're in the waiting room for about 30 minutes 45 minutes they were expecting us but they took my book and everything um in the uk i'm not sure wherever you are if it's the same thing like you have like all your paperwork like all in one booklet so she took my book with her we're waiting there i'm like do they know this like i'm about to give birth like i could have this baby on the floor in the waiting room like what are they playing at like i'm getting like really like antsy like come on let's do this let's get this ball rolling you know um so the midwife then comes back um and then she says like come with me so we go to this room um which looks like a delivery suite like it's you know it's got like um an ensuite it's got like the bed 
all the machinery and stuff like that and it's got like a big pool like at the back and this is when i knew that this was like the um midwife side you know of the place of the so the delivery suite because basically you either have the midwife side where it's like all natural birth and then you have like the medical side i don't know what that's called so i knew we were in the, in the midwife side and i was thinking to myself uh -huh. I'm gonna need them to move me because your girl is getting in that picture. <laughs> anyway, so we get there. She asked me to like pee um, in this like bowl thing. Um, I don't know what she wanted to check for. I think she told me, but like I said, I'm having contractions. So I'm not really paying attention to what she's saying. Um, so I go to the toilet, I pee, but I don't know if it's pee. I look at it. It's got like bits inside of it. It's got a bit of blood inside of it. Sorry for the TMI. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, "This is this how it's supposed to be? Is this my pee? So I go to my baby and I'm like, uh, hello, this is not normal. Something is, not, something is not right. Like my pee should not be looking at this. And then he's like, Lorraine, you know, your water's just broken. You know, you don't know what's in your uterus. Like it could be like the bits and all that kind of stuff that's like in there and stuff like that. Um, and the blood, I'm sure that's fine. He Googles it and then he's like, yeah, it's fine, right? Um, and then she basically tells me to like lie down. She puts all like these belts. Um, so I'm not sure if, yeah. anyway, I forgot to mention at the beginning that I had been to the hospital like, a few times okay <laughs> before like the, the, in the last few weeks of me um get, going into labor like um when i used to not feel any movement when i used to think that like something was not right so i was already accustomed to like the belts you know when they put like, the blue and the pink belt around your stomach and stuff just to feel about you know just to feel for the baby movement and all that kind of stuff so i knew what was happening um so she put that round um went away for some bit and then she came back said everything was okay with the baby the heart rate was fine we could hear the heart rate as well and then she checked how far along i was she said you're um you're only three centimeters dilated and i'm like what you know we need to be getting this party started i need to be pushing like i need to be having this baby because i'm thinking the baby's about to come now i'm thinking these are like actual like the actual contractions right She's like, no. She goes, so what you can do is that you can go home. I said, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> you must be having a bubble. Are you joking? Go home what? To give birth in my house? That is not happening. And also, I don't know how many times I have to say this and it's in my book. I want an epidural, okay? She's looking at me like I'm crazy. And then I said, so at what point can I get an epidural? And then she goes, um, when you're four centimeters dilated. I said, in that case, we're waiting because that's only a centimeter away and that's going to be soon she goes well if you if you want an epidural you can't obviously be in this section you need to be on the other side there are no rooms so you're going to have to wait but there's another lady who's nearly finished she just needs to be checked over by the doctor so what she's done you can go and take that room but in the meantime you know you're gonna have to stay here so why don't you try like using the pool maybe just to like help you with the contractions because like i said the contractions are coming and i'm like in pain now like it's it's happening okay i'm like okay cool i'm gonna try the birthing pool right i'd seen like a few videos of people giving birth in the pool i already knew that it's not happening for me this is just a pain reliever for me i want an epidural like <laughs> I was telling myself this way um so but before I actually went into the pool like I felt sick I threw up but I was just thinking okay I haven't eaten like this is probably why but like it was so painful to throw up because I hadn't eaten anything and like there was literally nothing inside my stomach aside from my baby um so I'm in the birthing pool I oh this is where it literally went from zero to a thousand because the contractions just went, they were just coming. Like it just felt like I wasn't getting a break because before I'd have a contraction and then I'll be able to like be fine. I'll be fine. Like nothing's happened. I'm having a conversation. I'm absolutely fine. Then I would have a contraction. Then it was just happening like that. But it's like getting in the water kind of like accelerated everything. It was like, there was no break i was just getting contraction after contraction after contraction and it was so painful like i remember saying to my baby dad like 
I feel like I'm possessed. Like, I feel like I'm going crazy. And then he like, he was laughing. I'm like, it's not like, this is not, this is not the time to be laughing at me. Um, so like, he's trying to be supportive. Like, he's trying to like, rub my back and everything. Like, you know, like, you know, positive affirmations and all this kind of stuff. Like, you got this, you can do this, bloody, bloody, bloody. Um, and then he's like, okay, why don't you eat something? And I had um, some mango slices that I packed, like literally, I'm not gonna, I don't, I don't know if I will do, but I highly doubt that I'll do what was in my maternity bag, but I'd watched all these videos and I was prepared to the T, honey. I even had um, my little outfits, my baby outfits in sandwich bags. Like if you know, you know, okay. So I had my snacks because I thought, you know, we're going to be here for a minute and I'm going to need to eat. So I had mango slices. So I, you know, he was feeding me some mango slices while I was in the pool. And two minutes later, like literally, I managed to just about like um, lean over the pool and I started throwing up. I was just sick. Everything was just coming up again. Um, so I was in the pool for, I believe, about an hour and I remember looking at the clock and it was, um, I don't know, was it quarter to nine or quarter to 10? Around that time. And I remember just saying like, you need to call now. Like we need to get to that room. I can't take it. I need that epidural now. Like I can't, can't take it. Um, so he calls, he presses the bell. He says that to the lady and um, she goes and then she comes back. She's like, okay, the room is ready. So even like getting out of the pool, you know, then putting the gown on me and us walking to the other room, it took forever because like I said, the contractions, there was literally like minimal breaks in between the contractions and like I was paralyzed with pain. Like the contract, when I was having contractions, like it felt like it's the worst, I can't explain it. It's the worst pain you could ever 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 experience like the people who say it's like period pains i don't know what your childbirth is like mine was my sorry i was about to swear mine was different okay it was so painful like i would say think of your worst period pain times a trillion it was so awful so it took a long time to get there so once we got there, I'm like leaning over the bed and then the midwife's like, oh, do you want some um, some gas and air? And I'm thinking, Heifer, you should have been giving me this since we came to the hospital hours ago. Like how you have left me in pain for so long. Oh my gosh. So anyway, she um, gives me the gas and air and that is heaven. Like it literally is heaven. Like in that moment, it literally like, was like calming me down like was just making the pain a little bit bearable the pain was still there don't get me wrong it, it wasn't numbing the pain but it was making it more bearable um she's doing the covid test um you know asking some questions i don't know what she's asking girl whatever so because i had told them i wanted an epidural they get the anesthesi anesthesist girl I don't know, but you know what I'm talking about. The person that gives you the epidural girl. So that person comes, I I got the gas in air. It, it was like, when I got to that room, I literally couldn't speak anymore. That's how much of the pain that I was feeling. It was so painful. I couldn't even verbalize anymore. And before she, they give you the epidural, they need to um, ask you all these questions like, have you ever had anesthesia before? Blah, 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 all these other questions. So I was having to like shake my head or like do this to answer her questions. Um, as she's asking me the questions, the meal was like, you have to stop. Something's wrong. I need to check the baby. So they had swapped shifts. So it was like a different midwife now, not the one that I was used to. So I like, she has to, I have to like lie down. Um, she's checking the baby. She's like, the baby's distressed. The heart rate had dropped to like 60 or 70 and like a normal baby heart rate. I think it's from like 110 to like 160. Don't quote me, but I think that's what it was. Um, and the baby's heart rate was like at 60. She's like, you know, something's wrong. The baby doesn't um, like like this or whatever. And as I'm lying down, it's like the room just filled with people. Like one minute, it was just like three people, 
three as in medical professional people in the room with um my baby dad um and then all of a sudden i could just hear so many voices and at this point my eyes were closed like i was in so much pain like so i've got one woman like that's at the top of my head and like i could hear other voices and she's trying to talk to me lorraine i'm gonna need you to open your legs darling open your legs darling something's wrong with the baby darling we need to you know get to the baby to get to the baby we can't so she is basically explaining to me what's happening every step of the way because i'm not a hundred percent there because i don't know if it's because of the pain or whatever like i'm not with it so she's trying to talk to me and explain to me what's happening they're trying to like spread my legs open and stuff like that um so they, as they're talking they're basically saying that they're gonna need to put i can't remember what it is but they have to put something onto the baby's head to be able to monitor the baby's vitals as, a, as opposed to doing it through the stomach and through the belt because the baby um so heart rate was really um low and they needed to find out what was happening so they were trying to do it then they were like okay we can't do it like she's got um urine inside of her so they had to put a catheter um and like um for me to like pee and like get the urine out so that they'll be able to put this thingy up into like you know my cervix and onto the baby's head um and they were struggling for a little bit and I think it's because the baby's head basically wasn't low enough so they were having to like really like go up to like put the thing up to the baby's head um but as soon as they put the baby as soon as they put put it on it started like reflecting the vitals on the machine I think because everyone calmed down and they said that the baby was fine but bearing in mind all that's happening but I'm still in pain like I, I can still hear what's happening um but I can't interact I can't you know talk to them and, and say how, what what's my mind and how I'm feeling because I'm in so much pain I just keep on like um um breathing on the gas and then she's telling me like Lorraine just make sure that you only breathe on the gas when like you're having contractions and I'm like who no I'm literally breathing in the, I'm breathing in the gas like you know as much as I could G getting to the point where sometimes I was like so well I was calling it a high because I was breathing in so much gas that I'll be like <gasps> it kind of reminds me sometimes like when my baby's like feeding and like she overfeeds and like she's like baby drunk I don't know if you guys have heard the, the term baby drunk like that's how I was my baby's like <laughs> anyway um so the anesthetist comes back to like um try and put the um, epidural so like you have to like sit on the edge of the bed when you're getting an epidural and kind of like scrunch um over as as much as you can so that your back is outwards and you have to be completely still um and at the same time i was having contractions <laughs> like they were really 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 bad so i'm like sitting there trying to breathe in the gas um so i had to have someone holding the actual thing for me and all i was doing was trying to breathe and i had to put my hands up it was just so so painful um, so they put like the local she put the local anesthesia on my back i think she just sprayed it because it was really really cold and then she started putting the epidural um into my back but i could feel it but she told me that i couldn't i shouldn't be able to feel it that's why she had put the local anesthesia so i wouldn't feel it so i'm like ow because i can feel the needle and she's like what can you feel it i'm like yeah i can feel it so she had to put more local anesthesia on my back so i couldn't feel it right so she does that it's taken it feels like it's taken forever like she what well, it feels like she's struggling to put it in or she, something's going wrong it's taking too long and i'm in so much pain all i'm just thinking is i just need this to kick in i just need this to kick in so i can get a breather so i can just breathe and for this pain to just stop okay so she's like okay she's done um but i don't feel uh, no different i can still feel the pain um, because they say that like for some people say like as soon as they they put the epidural in like you're supposed to like not feel anything like be numb but I can still feel the pain um so she does a test dose and she's like oh we're gonna have to do it again because the epidural has come out so it didn't work I'm just like oh my god I'm gonna have to do all this all over again like honestly like if you've ever had an epidural 
like you would understand well i don't know for me it just felt like it just took so long or maybe because of the complications that was happening in the game so second time round, she tries to put the epidural um similar thing kind of happens where i kind of feel the needle again so she has to put more local anesthesia again and then um she puts it in it feels like it's it's taking so long because you know i'm it's so difficult to be scrunched over with a belly on um on top of your belly whilst you're having contractions is the most difficult thing ever um but i was so determined like i was like i'm gonna i need to be still one because i ain't gonna be paralyzed and two i am not giving birth naturally i cannot do it like if this is the pain i know it's probably gonna be bloody worse um when i'm actually giving birth so i was trying my hardest like you know to be still um so that she could put it in so she then um puts in the epidural again for the second time and so i'm not sure how she realized that it didn't work because she done the test dose and the test dose worked and but i'm not sure how she realized that it's not it didn't work um, and she was like i'm sorry it didn't work like we're gonna have to try again like i honestly could i just that finished me that absolutely ruined me i was like do you know what this is i can't like i thought i was losing my mind i thought i was actually losing my mind with the pain and to hear that it hadn't worked a second time i was like oh my gosh but as that's happening again a huge rush of people will come in the doctor comes in they're like something they're looking at the monitor you know something is wrong with the baby the baby doesn't like the contractions um you know their heart rate is dropping again we're gonna have to check you again and i'm like oh my gosh please and this is the only time but i was able to speak the only time i was able to speak like i said oh my gosh please please just let her put the epidural in and then you can do it after please i cannot take this i am in so much pain i cannot take this anymore and then um, the doctor's looking at the at the monitor the midwife's gonna talk to me trying to convince me to say no you need to do this now because you know the baby's like more important this that and the other and the doctor's like actually no i can spare 10 minutes so if the um anesthesia anesthesist or whatever if they can do it within 10 minutes then cool we can check the baby after okay so she and i'm like okay cool do it but make sure you get it right this time like i proper shout at her like i was so angry i was so upset and she's like it's not my fault it's not my fault it's a blind procedure and i'm thinking it's not blind you've got the needle in your hand like figure it out this is the third time you're messing with my life here and i'm in so much pain um so she does it for the third time again feels like it's the longest time ever and um she's like okay it's worked now um so they basically lie me on my back and she's like okay do you feel any different like do you feel better and I, I'm just keep using the, um, the gas in here, keep breathing it. I'm like shaking my head, like no, because I could still, I could still feel the contractions basically, and I still had to use the gas in air. And then she says, okay, it takes up to 20 minutes for the epidural to kick in, so just give it some time. So they're checking me basically, and they say that um, I'm five centimeters dilated. I'm like missing bits. Okay, so before when like the huge rush of people came when they checked me, um, the nurse who checked me had said I was seven centimeters dilated. So basically I had jumped from like three centimeters to seven centimeters so quickly. They didn't know how it happened. They were like, oh, you know, she was like, oh my gosh, she only came in at this time. You know, she was only three centimeters. I checked, everything was all right, da, 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 whatever. They're having conversations amongst themselves. So that was then, this is before the whole epidural disaster saga started happening um but anyway after the third attempt of the epidural when that actual doctor was now checking um was now checking she said no she's not seven centimeters she's only five centimeters dilated okay um so they the doctor's basically like 
um, I don't think she can wait until labor. And I'm thinking, I know what that means. <laughs> I know what that means and ain't no way in hell, ain't no way in hell are we doing that. Um, she's like, well, basically the baby's distressed. She doesn't like the contractions. Her head is too high. You're only five centimeters dilated and it's gonna take, you don't know how, it's, how long it's gonna take for you to be fully dilated, um, 10 centimeters dilated, 10 centimeters dilated that is, so that you can push and give birth to the baby and the baby is not gonna be able to be able to um, wait that long basically. And I'm basically shaking my head, shaking my head because before, we went into um i went into labor i'd already told baby dad like these are the things that i do not want to happen i'm not getting forceps i do not want the episop what's it called where they cart you from your known to your bum basically i don't want that i don't want forceps like i had already said this like i was all like set on my birth plan i wanted and an epidural and i was going to push my baby out like i was set okay so i'm shaking my head um I'm like saying no okay and then the the doctor's like okay i'm gonna try and like basically um activate the baby i don't know what it's called but it's basically where they tickle the baby's head just to kind of make the baby come down basically so that you can um um go to labor quick quickly um, so I have to lie down again and then she she does that and she says we're gonna have to give it another I think it's 10 minutes that she says um, if that doesn't work basically we need to have an emergency c-section and I'm like oh pray like oh god please I don't want that to happen you know please let this just work this side and the other at the same time I'm still in pain this damn epidural has not kicked in so this anesthesiast woman whatever she's asking me the way and i used to in pain because she can she she can see me using the gas and air you know what i'm trying to say she's like are you still in pain i'm like mm -hmm. i'm like shaking my head um so by this time it's been 20 minutes so it hasn't worked so she's like oh it hasn't worked i'm thinking oh this is my worst nightmare my worst nightmare the only thing that i wanted the only thing that i needed yeah from this the epidural it's not working like what's gonna happen do you know what i mean so anyway it's now 10 minutes later she checks me um no she didn't check me they were looking on the chart and and the um, machine or whatever um talking amongst themselves she's basically saying like nothing's happened it didn't work basically they were hoping that the um baby's movement i don't know the baby was gonna move by being, you know, activated or whatever that she had done, it didn't work basically. And I'm basically, she's saying, you know, you need to have C-section, like it needs to happen now. And I'm basically shaking my head like, no, no, no. So, you know, I hear my, my baby dad talking to them, like he's asking questions, like what would happen if she didn't, you know, ha have it, like why does she need all this, I think he's trying to understand himself, why this is the next option. And then bless his heart, he had to basically convince me to have the one of the things I did not want to do because I was very adamant, very, very adamant that I did not want a C-section um so yeah in the end he convinces me that you know this is what you know needs to happen um, i know you don't want to to do this this is the one of the things that you didn't want to do but the most important thing is the baby is that she comes out and she's healthy and she's safe and that's what we want um so um that's what convinced me basically because ultimately all this you know about i want to push and all that kind of stuff like it's it was more about me as well and not wanting to have to do with have to deal with the aftermath aftermath should i say of having a c-section also um and also the pride like that i pushed my own baby out do you know what i mean um so anyway i then agreed to it but I'm in so much pain still. I like, so I'm just like, you know, nodding my head saying, okay, they're trying to get me to sign. Like I literally, I couldn't even open my eyes, let alone sign. Um, they're like, Lorraine, we need to go now, we need to go now. So he had gone and changed and he was wearing the scrubs now. Like everyone was all like ready. They, they were basically waiting for me to sign so that they could move me to um, transfer me. No, 
they were going to transfer me so that they could just roll me in and push me to the theatre basically so after a while I managed to open my eyes and I managed to you know sign because they needed they needed my consent because I was still what's it called conscious yeah so I had to basically consent to the um to the c-section um but unfortunately the gas and air is connected to the wall so as they're like pushing me um um to go to the theater i had to leave the gas in there i'm like oh my god no i need it i need it because i'm in so much pain and um they're like you know you you'll have some gas in air when we get there um before we actually start the um um operation uh it felt like literally it must have been like a two minute journey or whatever but it felt so long i was in so much pain i was holding on to the bars like screaming in so much pain so i get there they transfer me from the bed that i was in before to like the theater bed and um they give me the gas and air I'm like i need where is the gas and air they give me the gas and air um so because the epidural hadn't worked they had to give me obviously pain release so that they could do the operation so she did she said she was going to do a spinal i can't remember what it's called basically so that i wouldn't have to have um general anesthesia like that's the way you're absolutely asleep and you don't know what's happening because um she was saying like you know that's like literally the the, the last resort um because they want you when you're having a c-section they want you to be able to be awake so that you can see your baby straight after um as well and i think it's i don't know I don't know but that's what they wanted to do and she says like we, we i have to do it um, the same way that i did the epidural so you're gonna have to sit back up on the bed i said no you are playing with me you are there is no way i can't i physically could not because i was lying on my back i said i, I, I physically cannot you need to do it while i'm lying down i cannot do it i literally cannot do it uh, as i'm breathing on the gas and air um so she's like okay i can do it while you're lying on your side so they put me to the side again do the whole local anesthesia anesthesia thing but for some reason this felt like it was not a quicker process but like it felt easier like even though i wasn't doing it but obviously it was being done to me but it just felt like it was an easier process than getting an, an epidural done um so she puts that she she says it's done now and i kid you not as soon as they flip me back onto my back and i'm ly lying on the back on my back the pain just goes the pain absolutely just disappears and it's like i was all brand new again i started talking having conversation like but i'm panicking like oh my god i didn't want this to happen and like um i remember like looking at my, at my baby daddy and i'm like you need to look after my baby and then he ignores me i'm like did you hear me you need to look after my <laughs> you need to look after my baby and then he's like Lorraine stop like you're gonna look after your own baby you're gonna be absolutely fine like everything's gonna be okay they put like a sheet um up so that I couldn't see what was happening and um there was like new more people like the, the midwife had explained to me that don't worry there's gonna be more people in um, in the theatre but everyone has a job everyone's there for you and for your baby everything's gonna be fine and you know true to their word like they were being really informative and explaining to me like what was happening and you know saying kudos to my baby dad like he was the best birthing partner that I could have asked for like he was so supportive he was so good like he just knew what to do he just knew what to say distracted me like encouraging me positive affirmations like you know which like literally kept me going so like as they cut me up and do doing whatever they're doing girl because i couldn't see jack okay um he's talking to me and he's like calming me down or whatever um but there was this one point that all i heard was <laughs> And I'm like, oh, hell no. Oh, hell no. <laughs> what are they doing down there? So I look at him and I'm like, what are they doing? <laughs> so um, the midwife, you know, comes back. She's like, Lorraine, it's all fine. Everything is going good. They're just suctioning. It's, that's the suction where they're just like cleaning up basically the blood and stuff. But everything is fine. Everything is going like smoothly or whatever. 
and I think um, it lasted about 20 minutes, I kid you not. So we went into theatre at 10 to midnight. Um, no, it didn't last 20 minutes. I lied. Okay. No, I think we, they told us we had to, I had to have an emergency C-section at court, um, at 10 to 12. Um, and so I think it was about 40 minutes because I gave birth to my baby girl. Well, I didn't give birth to my baby girl, but my baby girl came into the world at, um, zero, 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 43. So, um, about quarter to one, basically. Um, I didn't feel a thing. So when they were pulling the baby, when they were pulling her out, didn't feel a thing, didn't feel nothing. It was like I was just lying there. I was literally just numb, paralyzed from like, it, like literally paralyzed so um i just remember my baby that is like they pulled her out and they're like walking her to the table or whatever i couldn't see a thing he's just like she's so beautiful i'm like is she is she how do you know how could you see you know all this other stuff and it's like she's so beautiful um so you know but she was silent couldn't hear a thing she wasn't making a noise and i was like oh my god what is happening so he goes over to the table and it feels like forever, but I could just hear the, oh, mama, it's okay. I could hear the midwife who was with her and trying to like get her to cry. Like, it's okay. Like her voice was so calm. I'll never forget the sound of that woman's voice. It was so, so calm. And that made me calm, even though she wasn't crying. Like the fact that she was being so calm, well, I don't know. They're trained to just be calm in that situation no matter what i don't know i was like anyway she's, she's gonna be a she's gonna be a and then after like i think it was like two minutes a minute or two i can't remember what i could hear was just her beautiful cry and i was just like oh my god my baby my baby and you know it was just it was heartbreaking not being able to hold her like not being able to see her immediately um when she came out like that's what I wanted. I wanted to like see like ex everything that was happening to be able to see her coming out, to be able to like, you know, be the first person to like to hold her and everything. Um, so, you know, her dad, he got to hold her and everything. So at least one of us got to hold her like, you know, and he... girl. <laughs> um, yeah, so he got to like hold her and everything and like, yeah you know got to have that experience and i didn't have to i didn't get the opportunity at that point to have like skin to skin because i wanted like the first time that i held her to be like skin to skin and everything well i think the first time i held her was skin to skin i can't remember but um yeah so i think that was that was quite upsetting but um you know he brought her over once they had finished everything like weighing her um she was six and a half pounds so i think that's like average size for a baby right i don't know um but yeah she was six and a half pounds so he brought her over to the table because they were still like basically sewing sewing me back up okay um and then yeah we managed to like take a cute picture like while uh, while i was lying on the table so um, yeah, I think I was lying there for about 20 minutes or half an hour while they were still like doing what they were doing there. So, you know, and then they had to take the baby away again. I don't know what they were doing. They were doing whatever they were doing with the baby, whatever. And after that, um, you know, I was done. Um, so they then moved me to the recovery room and I just started like throwing up. Like I was just being sick. Uh, no, I think I started. I started being sick while I was still in theatre. Um, so they, you know, you know, they, they have to keep putting like the um, sick balls by my side for me to like throw up and stuff. I think I was sick twice or three times in the theatre and a lot of times in the recovery room. It was just like nerve wracking and like quite scary, like, scary because I didn't know why. But they explained to me basically because it was the an an anesthesia and the pain relief. Like I had quite a lot with the um, local anesthesia that they had tried, that they'd used on me 
um, beforehand when they're trying to give me an epidural and also the, the one when I had the, um, the C-section. So that's what was making me like um, nauseous, like not nauseous, but like actually like physically like throw up and stuff. Um, so I think I was in the recovery room for, for about a couple of hours. I can't remember. I think so. Two, two, three hours, I think and um i was so determined to breastfeed um because they kept on because i because i kept on being sick they were kind of like waiting on me kind of thing they were like okay the baby's hungry like we can give her some formula i was like no bring her and stuff like that and luckily she just latched on like so like naturally like it was all her like i didn't do nothing like just put on her boob the boob and she knew exactly what to do like it's like she was born for this like <laughs> so she just latched on so i was so happy um but i kept on having to like give them the baby like every time i was being sick and then um hold the baby again um so i think around like 4 a.m in the morning 4 5 a.m in the morning um that's when like they had done all like the checks on me like i was cleared like to leave the recovery room i was fine and then um they had done all the checks like on baby girl and stuff because of the fact that um she was like distressed and stuff well while she was in the womb they had to keep on doing checks on her umbilical cord oh yes her dad got to um cut the cord which is cute um so they done that so everything was like fine um but they'd said that they had to do another check like the day after and stuff um so they moved us to like the ward so i i didn't realize that the room that we were in was like a recovery room i thought that was the room i was going to be in <laughs> until like i had to go home and stuff i thought that was my room but no girl um the ghetto we had to go to like the ward um but they told us that um the dad like my baby dad couldn't basically stay um because of covid and stuff um, he had to go the ghetto like i oh that was just so heartbreaking that i've just given birth i've just had like major surgery i can't move um you know i'm basically useless with the baby like i need help with the baby and i'm going to be by myself all through the night and even if like it was during the day and stuff they can only allow him to come for a couple of hours like that was awful but you know because i was thinking if i had given birth naturally like i could have gone home like straight away you know if everything was all right or but the very least stay in the hospital for one night and then go um so that was very upsetting like spending the night by myself um but luckily i only sh i shared a room with only one other person it was fine they like helped me and stuff at night time um, every time I needed to feed her when she cried, um, they would pass her to me. I would be like, okay, you put her back, like to change her and stuff like that. They did all that kind of stuff. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to do it myself. It was quite upsetting. Um, and I stayed in hospital for like two nights. Um, yeah, and that's basically it really. That's the story of my labour and my birth. So like I said, you know, I found it quite emotional and quite traumatic very very traumatic um but the most important thing is that she's here um even though the way is not a way that i want so i would say my advice to anyone who's expecting um any mum you know mamas to be is that don't be so gun ho or so caught up with your own birth birth plan like of course have a plan like because it helps you know to know what you want to know what to expect like no no everything that can happen but like i said one of the reasons why i wanted to do this video is that so you know you know what else could happen like things do not go according to plan because you know the baby doesn't doesn't know you have a birth plan they're gonna come how they're gonna come they're gonna come when they're gonna come do you know what i mean so try not to you know be so focused on your birth plan you know what i mean but yeah so that's my birth story you know the most important thing is my baby girl is here she's perfect let me know if you guys have any questions for me that you want me to answer about the whole labor and delivery um experience or about 
baby motherhood and any of that stuff because you know we might we're gonna be doing a dash of motherhood on this channel honey okay um so yeah uh, i hope you guys have enjoyed this video if you have make sure that you guys like this video share this video to anyone um who you think might find this useful uh, and also subscribe to my channel welcome to the family i'll see you guys in the next video Mwah. bye guys